Hi, my name's Mike Stevenson from Connected Systems Consulting Limited. Today I'm going to talk about BizTalk 2013 testing and the Visual Studio Fakes framework. As I said, my name's Mike Stevenson. I'm a UK-based freelance consultant and I specialise in BizTalk, Windows Azure and integration using Microsoft technologies. For a while I've been in the Microsoft MVP program and I've originally was a BizTalk MVP but more recently I moved over to the integration MVP. In addition to this, I'm also an organiser of the UK Connected Systems user group. I also blog and tweet quite extensively about some of these technologies. We'll begin this module by looking at some of the challenges we face when trying to test BizTalk applications. We'll then look at a specific example involving the testing of a BizTalk map. At this point, we'll then introduce the FAKES framework, which was introduced in Visual Studio 2012, and we'll look at the original example to show how that changes how we may test the map. After this, we'll do a demonstration to show exactly how this technique works, and then we'll summarize the module. As a BizTalk developer, we'd often try and follow as many good practices as we can, and we'd often be using things like BizUnit, behavior-driven development, and test-driven development techniques to develop our applications. However, with BizTalk, we often have some challenges that make it just a little bit more difficult than traditional .NET development. Some of these challenges would be things like dependencies that integration typically has. It's often very difficult to stub these out. Also, we have things like orchestrations, which are just more difficult to test in isolation. We also have challenges such as the BizTalk assemblies, which can be very difficult to mock out. And also, in BizTalk, your, co your code would run inside a complex hosting environment, which again adds more complexity to unit testing. If we look at a classic example of unit testing from BizTalk, you'd start with a developer who would be trying to test a BizTalk map, but often maps would have dependencies on things like c -sharp helper classes, or possibly external things such as a database. So if we walk through how the developer would typically execute this test, they may begin by setting up some information in the database ready for the test to run. They'd follow that by making the unit test execute the map. The BizTalk map would then make a call to a c -sharp helper class, and that helper class would retrieve data from the database. As you can see from the perspective of the unit test, you've got quite a lot of dependencies to have to deal with in this scenario, and that can just make BizTalk testing that little bit more complex. Now let's introduce the Visual Studio Fakes framework. The Fakes framework was a new testing feature that was introduced in Visual Studio 2012. The aim of the framework is to make it easier to isolate code under test. There are two key features to this Fakes framework. The first is called stubs, and stubs allow, allow you to create a concrete implementation of an interface or class which you can then pass into your system under test. Secondly, there's a shim, and a shim is a runtime method interceptor which allows you to provide your own implementation as an alternative to a method that you would execute. Now let's take a look at how the fakes framework can change the scenario we looked at earlier. In addition to the unit test map helper class and database, we now have a shim of the C-sharp helper class. When we start the test, we'd begin by setting up this shim class, and then we'd call the map like we did earlier. But now, when the BizTalk map tries to execute the helper class, at runtime the method execution is diverted to the, sim, uh, to the shim of that helper class, and this means we can control what the return values are from that method without having to depend on the database. This makes the execution of our unit test a lot simpler by removing a significant number of dependencies. Now let's look at a demo. In this demo we have a solution with three projects. The first project is a Visual Studio BizTalk project, which contains a BizTalk map and a BizTalk schema. The second project is a C-sharp helper utility project, which has a class in it which will be called from the BizTalk map. The third project contains some Visual Studio unit tests. If we take a closer look at the schema, you can see that it's a very simple schema with just a root element and one node under that. Again, in the map, we want to keep the demo as simple as possible, so we've reused the schema shown previously as the input and output schema, and we're simply going to map the name element from one schema to the other. On the way, we've got this scripting functoid, and in this scripting functoid, you'll be able to see that we're going to make an external call 
to our acme.map.utilities.maphelper class where we'll execute the method called get some value from the database. Now let's take a look at the helper class. In this helper class you can see we've got this method I mentioned earlier called get some value from database and this would be the method that would make a call to the database under normal conditions. However, for the purpose of, of this demo, we're actually going to throw a not implemented exception to really illustrate the point that this um, method's going to be shimmed out by the unit test. So if we actually called it, we'd get an error anyway. Just to recap the demo so far, we've seen the schema, which will be used as the input and output to the map we want to test. And the map's going to make a call with a script in functoid to the map helper class which has a method called get some value from database. Now let's look at how we'll test this. In the test project you can see here that we've extended the MS build process to generate a class from the schema that we showed you earlier and this will actually make our unit test easier because rather than having to worry about files and potentially getting out of sync with the schema we'll actually use a strongly typed class every time. Moving into the class itself you can see here we've got a couple of helper methods at the bottom which are used to serialize and deserialize the class we've just talked about to disk which is then used as the input and output from a biztalk map when you execute it in C-sharp code to do a unit test. We have a method here called test without shim and this will actually illustrate how we'd normally execute a test of a biztalk map. So you can see here we'd, we'd set up our input object serialize that object to disk, we then execute the map passing in the path to that file we've just saved to disk and when that's executed we then go and deserialize that, that file to a response object and then we could make some assertions against the properties of that object and that was the way we always used to test BizTalk maps. In order to use shims and make things a little bit easier we have to do a couple of things that are different so let's begin by shrinking down this method. Now, if we look at the references in our test project, you'll be able to see that we have the acme.map.utilities um, reference. What we'll be able to do now is if we right click on that reference and we have this new menu called add fakes assembly, and we can simply click that menu and Visual Studio will now go and generate this copy of the utilities assembly with dot fakes on the end. And that assembly will now contain fakes for all of the classes within the utilities project. So in order to use shims, one of the things that's really important is to use the shim context, but you need to make sure you clean that up afterwards. So let's paste some code in here that'll begin showing us how to use this. So at the start we have an iDisposable object which is going to represent the shim context, and we'll have an initialization of our test class which will actually create that object from the Microsoft unit testing framework. And you can see here we've got shimcontext.create. That sets the shim framework up for us. As I mentioned, it's really important to also clean up this shims framework. So let's also paste in a teardown method, and that'll simply dispose the shim context when we're complete. Next, let's look at what we'd have to do to the test we had previously to make that work with the shims framework. So let's begin by adding a new line of code to replace this comment about setting up some database. So you can see here we've now added the database response which will be a value that simulates what the database would return. We'll also have the shim helper class set up here. So when we add the shim helper class line here this simply sets up the redirect for the get value from database method so that when when that value is executed it will return the database response variable from above. As we go further down, the rest of the test doesn't really change, except that we need to change our assert statement at the end. So we can change that to be r equal, and the value we expect is our database response. And we'll, as before, we'll check that that's the response name property. And you can see with about three lines of code there, we've actually modified that test so that it no longer has the dependency on the database and would now actually call the shim class instead. In this module, we've introduced you to the Visual Studio Fakes framework and how this framework can be used to simplify the testing of a BizTalk map through the use of shims.
This opens up a number of other possibilities for BizTalk developers, and I believe that this framework could also be used to simplify the testing of things like pipelines, helper classes, and pipeline components. Hopefully this will make your life a lot easier during your BizTalk development experiences.